Hallelujah. Glory to his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, hallelujah. You know, the church should have been, it should have been a volcano eruption in this house. But we have become so programmed uh, that we so tuned in to dancing sometime on the wrong frequency. See, when you're ready to believe in yourself, it doesn't matter what situation that you're facing, it won't dictate or control your outcome. But keep, because even when I'm broke, now, until it do what? Manifest itself. The first song was manifestation. The next song was now. So in order for it to manifest manifestation itself, for it to come to manifestation, then you got to believe within yourself that it can happen. But when we fail to realize is that it's our situations that's controlling our destiny. You are designed to call yourself victorious. When you get to the place that does not matter what you face, it's when you're going to start getting your breakthrough. I heard God say at my house when I was in my bedroom, and I told my wife, I heard God say, honesty. What's your message? If he said that we're more than a conqueror, and he said that we should do greater things, if he healed the lame, if he opened up the blind eyes, if he opened up the deaf ears, if he healed uh, the withered hand, then what is our message? That we can't be more than a conqueror. What's your message? I heard him say honesty, meaning I already know everything about us. All I need you to do is be honest with me. Whatever your calamity may be, whatever issue that you're dealing with, he already know. All he wants us to do is be honest. <laughs> Honesty beat all of that. But we've been prone to that for so long. It's going to take some time to be detoxed. To get to where we have power yeah. in the mind. I started studying a message this morning, well last week. And I was going to come out of the book of Matthew, chapter 14, where we talked about the storms. Where Jesus, who was being forced to become king out of the wrong timing. After he performed his miracle of feeding the 5,000. After he had fed all of those folks and ended up picking up fragments. 
baskets of fragments. At the end of feeding all these 5,000 plus people, they sought to make him king, force him to be king. And to keep down the disturbing, disturbing, to keep down chaos and disruption, he told his disciples, go hurry up and get in the boat. Let's get out of here. So many words. Let's get out of here. It's not my time to do what they're calling me to do. So he sent them in the boat. The Bible says that they were halfway to the shore and halfway off the shore. And there rose a storm. And this storm was contrary to what they was used to. And there rose a wind waves as high as they can get. And this kind of storm is called a protection storm. Protection, understand that, protection. Protection storm. This is a storm that Jesus allowed them to go through. But at the same time, he was going to protect them. He was going to protect them. And I want you to know that we're facing various types of storms, yeah. spiritual storms. Yeah. Not only do we deal with the natural storms, yeah. but we're facing spiritual storms. The only way that you can conquer this storm is to know what type of storm that you're facing. Oftentimes we hear you're in a storm. But you're going to come through. But how you come through makes the difference. It's like going to a war without the right weapon. So anytime someone come to you and tell you that you're in a storm, I need to know what type of storm I'm in so I know how to deal with it head on. So... Not all storms are bad storms, is what I'm trying to say. But if you don't understand the storm, then you will look at all storms as bad storms. But it was a protecting storm that he allowed the disciples to face. Then there's another storm, and I looked this up because I was wanting to know about the storms. Because them the sto we're dealing with storms. Right now, all of us. We're smiling. We're laughing. But we're dealing with storms. Financial storms. Medical storms. You know, all types of storms we're facing. And sometimes these storms can cause you to lose your focus. These storms can cause you to be distracted. These storms can cause you to be on the wrong path that God has laid before you. But I come this morning to enlighten you about the storms. When we read about Jonah over in the second chapter, God told Jonah to go and preach the gospel to Nineveh. But Jonah thought it on himself to do what he wants to do. He rejected what God told him to do. How many times do we find ourselves in Jonah's shoes, picking and choosing who God can save? Picking and choosing who is worthy enough for us to minister to? How many times did we find ourselves in the shoes of Jonah? I'll preach and teach to each and every one of you in here, but I ain't going across the tracks and tell them how good God been to me. I ain't going across the tracks and tell them I was once a wretch. He saved me, he can do it for you. I'll preach to my brother and I'll preach to my sister. 
But right now I'm wearing the shoes of Jonah. I'm going to pick and choose who I want to carry the gospel to. And because of his rejection, there's trouble when you reject God. He found himself going down to Joppa, jumping on the boat. Somebody said I jumped out the ship years ago. <laughs> he found himself going down to Joppa. And he aborted a ship headed to Tasha. But there came a storm. What the Bible says, Brother Gerald. And it also says that God blew the wind that way. Here we see God is in control and in charge again. God allowed this storm to come up against this ship to the point that the men begin to question this type of storm that they have never experienced before. Jonah said, it is I. Read the story. It's my fault. We're facing this type of storm because of me, because of my rejection, because of my wrongdoing. It's the reason that we're going through what we're going through. The Bible said that they overthrew him. They overthrew him. This is a perfecting, a perfecting storm. They overthrew him, and God had a well. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> God had a well to catch the man of God. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to shake it. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you even until the end of the earth. Even in the midst of his rejection, God still was there. What do we get out of this here? We see that God is a forgiving God. I don't know who I'm talking to in here, but I want you to know that you serve a God who will give you a second chance. The Bible said that when he was swallowed up by this well, many of us have been swallowed up by this world, swallowed up by our affliction, Swallow up in relationship. Swallowed up in circumstances. Swallow up. Even in him being swallowed up, he began to pray. And the Bible said that even when he was praying, in the midst of his praying, he was quoting scriptures. Not so that God can hear it, but so that he can hear it himself. It's good, my brothers and sisters, when you get down on your knees and pray. Quote them scriptures out. Charge God with what he said he'll do for you. Quote them out. The Bible said that he began to praise God so much that this well that has swallowed him up whole cruise to the shore and spit him out. What a second chance when you do what you are not supposed to be doing. When you allow your money to swallow you up. When you allow your love for your husband or your wife to swallow you up to the point that you reject what God is telling us to do. Spit him out. God didn't leave him. God didn't forget about him. God didn't give up on him. Don't you give up on God. Don't you give in. Don't give up. If God be for you, who can come against you? Greater is he. Quote them scriptures. Tell yourself. Build your faith up. When you build your faith up, what happens is your endurance begin to grow. Your maturity begin to grow. When you build your faith up, you're able to walk in a place where nobody else will be able to walk. Because the power and the authority that God has invested in you will come to what? Manifestation. 
It's a perfecting storm, a storm that God has allowed to come upon him. Some storms that we face, God has placed them on us. I'm giving you some nuggets. Some storms that we face, God has placed them upon us. And if we know that God has placed them upon us, how much assurance is that to know that we're going to be all right? It may hurt right now, but I'm coming out. I'm going to make it. I may be down, but I'm going to get back up. Be in, but don't break. Hallelujah. When you know that God is in the storm with you, somebody said it was four of them in the fiery furnace. I want you to know when the three came out, there still was one left. Why? Because God knew one time we would be in the furnace. He's in the furnace waiting on you, 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 and me. It's called a perfecting storm. Then you look at this storm. This storm is called a connecting storm. Protecting storm, perfecting storm, and a connecting storm. A connecting storm is a storm that you bring upon yourself. Yeah. By doing what you know you don't have no reason doing, business doing. When God tells us to go right and we go left. When God tell a doctor to tell us to quit eating these pound cakes because our sugar diabetes. <laughs> Tight, but it's right. Tight, but it's right. But we go home and can't wait to eat a whole one. After dinner. Not just by itself. After we don't had a plate or two. Uh-huh. Or two. That's a storm that we bring up on ourselves. Oh, yeah. High blood pressure. Yes, <laughs> and we eat every back of bacon that we can eat. Oh, Not in moderation. <laughs> Not in moderation. <laughs> but every day. But every day. But every day. <laughs> but every day. We bring it upon ourselves, a connecting storm. And we constantly begging God to heal me. Make me whole. Fix me in this area. Fix my sugar diabetes. Regulate my blood pressure. Regulate my blood sugar. And in the same token, we got a plate next to us. That goes against everything that we're praying about. Everything that we're praying about, we got a plate. It doesn't necessarily have to be full, but whatever the matter may be, we got a plate right next to us waiting on us to get up off our knees. What's your message? What's your message? What's our, what's our message? Why ain't we seeing these things come to manifestation? What's our message? What's our message? It's my question. Ask yourself. But it's never too late. Who am I talking to in here and out there? It's never too late to get it right. As long as you got breath in your body. You got time to get it right. What he did yesterday, he'll do today. The storms of life is what we're challenged with. We're more than a conqueror. We've been made door for a night. 
What did it say? But joy comes in the morning. But joy comes in the morning. When is morning in your life? I don't know what you're trying to get from me. <laughs> you may not want me back again. But when is morning in your life? Ask yourself that. And if you don't know, then you've got to work on finding out. So that you can walk right before God and before men. So that you can walk up under the power and authority of the Holy Ghost. So that when you face that mountain, you can tell that mountain, be thou removed. It's more than just coming to church Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Tuesday. For not one year, but for 20 to 30 years. And don't see nothing different. Everything's still the same. Repetitive. Over and over and over and over. And God is saying, where are you at? I'm way up here. At the finish line, waiting on you. But you stuck on, and ain't nothing wrong with it. Because I'm dancing all over the devil's head. Every time he raises it up, I'm dancing on top of it. Even in my mishap, I'm dancing on top of it because I'm not afraid to tell him, now I'm healed. Even in the midst of me being sick, I'll say it until God come back. Or I'll say it until I walk in it. I don't claim nothing. It's the power of the mind. You want to become strong? You want to become victorious? You want to become dominant? You want to come, become in control of your step and your purpose and your destiny? Then you got to have a strong mind. For it is the mind that we serve God with. This is not the body. It's not how you look. It's not how many degrees you got. It's not how great you speak. If the devil get a hold of your mind, then he can get a hold of everything else. Because the body follows the mind. The mind don't follow the body. But we got it wrong. It's the power of the mind. God invested too much in us. Too much in us for the church to be sicker than the world. Hey! Hey! Too much has been invested in us for the church to be sicker than the world. How can I go and tell them, come taste and see that the Lord is good when I'm in worse shape than them? Physically, spiritually, mentally, just because they out there don't mean they know the Bible. I ran into a guy that when not going to church, he was so powerful in the Bible, I had to cut it off because he knew too much, more than I knew. <laughs> And I wasn't, ready, I wasn't getting ready to get in no debating. <laughs> I, I got enough sense to know when to back up. I got enough sense when to know to back up, but just to say that, just because they're on the side don't mean they don't know the word. Because trust me, they know the word. But we have to come to a place where we know who we are. And the reason that we're lacking in all of these areas is because of the knowledge. It's the knowledge. It's the understanding of the word. It's knowing what we're coming up against. But we get caught up in the hype and we miss what we're hearing. You get caught up in the hype, you miss what God wants you to hear clearly. Even in the midst of the minister in the song, they minister so powerful, I shouldn't even have to get up and preach. But we missed it because we were prone to just listen to the preacher preach. But they was preaching better than I am right now. God spoke in the songs better than I am right now. Told you who you was, who you could become, who you should be. 
Told you you can have it right now, not later. If you believe, you can have it right now. He was preaching better than I'm preaching. But we missed it. It went over the head because we stuck on who's bringing the word. God brings the word in all kinds of ways. But you got to have your ear tuned. But those are storms. Things that causes us to not be focused. And I'm thanking God with the spirit of humility that I'm focused. I'm focused. And the biggest room is the room of improvement. And that's what I'm working on. Improving. Not always doing the right thing. Not to say I'm acting a fool. But I'm not always doing the right thing. I'm not always thinking right. I'm not always talking right to my wife. Not like I'm acting a fool. We got to make that clear. <laughs> because that's where the church people mind is at. That's where the church people mind is at. But I'm trying in these last days to walk up right before God. I'm trying in these last days to be the best that I can be for God. Because the Bible, the Bible is showing itself. Killing everywhere. Everywhere. I rolled by, picked up a kid from school the other day, and I had my buddy Wayne in the car with me. We were pulling up, and I just spoke. Hey, Wayne said, why do you look at you like that? Dude looked at me like he wanted to kill me. You almost can't, we, you almost can't speak to people nowadays. So I'm trying my best to be ready. I'm trying my best to be ready. And I'm trying to encourage you to be ready. We're going to face storms, natural storms, spiritual storms. We're going to face them. But when you have a relationship with God, he will enlighten you to the type of storm that you're facing. He said he'll never let anything come up on us unaware. God's word is true. So the saints of God should not be surprised by what's going on. These things come to us first. But if we're not where we're supposed to be, then we're going to miss out. We're going to miss out. We'll preach this some other time. I guess that's what God wanted me to talk to y'all about. The storms of life. And everyone in here is facing some type of storm. But I want you to know that you can come out of it. Some of our storms is at the beginning. Some of our storms is in the middle. And some of our storms is at the end. So don't give up. And don't give up. Don't give in. Because your storm can be at the end. The wind may be blowing, but my storm is at the end. I can see daylight. Don't throw in the towel. Don't believe the devil. The devil is a liar and the father of it. Do we have anybody that still believe in miracles? Do we have anybody in the church that still believe in miracles? Do we, mother? That's why I'm still here 20 something years down the road because when I came in here, we believed in the miracles. Mother, deacon, sister at that time, mothers, mothers would testify about the goodness of Jesus Christ. And if you hold on, one mother used to say, I got that drop dead salvation. And I sit right there. And she was up in age and she wouldn't complain. Them mothers didn't complain about nothing. It didn't matter what they was going through. It didn't matter what they say. They knew what it meant to say now. 
They knew what it meant to say now. Mother said, I got that drop dead salvation. It don't matter what the devil bring toward me. It don't matter what I say. I'm going to stand for God. For God I live and for God I die. Do we have anybody in the house of God now that will stand and say, for God I live and for God I die? Regardless of what you're facing. Regardless of what you're facing. Don't give in. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or ask according to the what power that worketh within you. All things work together for the good. If you don't understand these scriptures, go search them out, dig them out, get some meaning to them so that it'll stick to your system. Then when you find yourself facing something, you got something to rise up. If you ain't got nothing to rise up, this thing is for real. Don't come this far and miss it. Moses missed out. As powerful as he was, he didn't see the promised land. I know y'all want to see the promised land. Don't come this far and don't miss, and miss the promised land. Because there's people just like us miss the promised land. Read your Bible. I'm trying not to miss the promised land. There's been times in my life if he would have came back, I would have missed out. And I'm going to have a fight when I leave out of here. Because I gave you something. And the devil is mad at me. And he's mad at y'all too. Because y'all got some understanding. So now when he come at you, you can tell him. Get thee behind me, Satan. That one ain't going to work. I know it's you. And then when you face that other one, you'll be like, thank you, Lord. I know this is for my benefit. Because I know what type of storm this is. And then when you face a storm that you brought on, you ain't going to blame nobody. You're going to be like David. It is me. Help me, Lord. See what I'm saying? That's growth. Now I know that if I put a storm, this is going to help you from putting a storm upon you. Now you're going to think twice before you do something that's going to cause harm to you because you know it is you who is hurting yourself. Let's call a connecting storm. So before I go to do something to hurt me, I'm going to think about it. Oh, how powerful is it to know what you're dealing with? I'm saying something. How powerful is it to know what you're dealing with? Mm, mm, mm. When you know what you're dealing with, then you have control of your destiny and your walk. I can go on and on and I'm through. I'm done. Today is a new day for you. New anointing, a new testimony, new healing, new deliverance falling upon you right now. I can see it. See, I may not be this preacher that y'all see running all over everywhere on the TV, say, getting this line, getting that line, and I can make this happen for you. I may not be that type of person that you're used to, but I will tell you this. If I tell you God says something, take it to the bank, because I don't play with him, neither do my wife. There's some new deliverance in this house. God going to deliver you today. And you're not going to be afraid to come back next Sunday and tell somebody what God did for you. Yeah. 
There's some people body that God is touching today. Pain that you have never experienced before that you're dealing with. New pain. And you're running your mind back trying to figure out where it comes from, but you can't. God going to take that pain away from you. God going to take that pain away from you. Today. Today. God is in the business of healing, delivering, and performing miracles for his people in such a time as this. Elder Harrison always says miracles, wonders, and signs. Every one of us is a miracle. Every one of us. And when we understand that, when we get a hold of that, then you're going to be able to see other miracles. But first, you have to realize that you are a miracle. God said, when you realize that you are a miracle, then I'm going to show you other miracles. It takes a miracle to understand a miracle. It takes a miracle to understand and see a miracle. God getting ready to show you you. Signs and wonders. Elder said, I praise God because I made it from last week to this week. In the middle of that hallway, in the middle of that vestibule, was the devil fighting me every step of the way. But I made it into the house one more time. That's a sign. That's a sign. It's not automatic that we can come here. It's not automatic that we can just leave and come back next Sunday. That's your sign. When you see your brother, when you see your sister, that's a sign. And when everybody get on one page, when they came into the upper room, when everybody get, it was when they came into the upper room and got on one accord that it fell. When everybody get on one page, when everybody see everybody as a sign and a miracle, when everybody see everybody as a sign and a miracle, then you're going to see the manifestation of God. Everybody get on one accord. Whew, I'm done. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Anyone who stand in need of prayer, we'll pray for you right now. If you need a touch, if you need God to do something in your life, if you need God to do something for your children, if you need God to do something for your relationship, if you need God to do something on your job, if you need God to do something for you, now is the time. Now. I'm charging God with now. I'm looking for God to do something in each and every one of you lives who come up here today. right now don't be afraid God won't be afraid of you hallelujah